And um, let you know, like, what about the neck? Because, like, for me, um, now that I'm a little bit older, I mean, I don't have a lot of it, but I see that, you know, like when I turn my neck in, like, certain ways, it really seems like, you know, that neck tissue is um, kind of like not very becoming, you know. You can, you know, that's if I'm aging anywhere, that I'm aging mostly, like, in my neck. So would if you would... I mean, would would you ever, you know, think, well, I'm going to do a neck lift and not do a facelift, or how do you, you know, kind of like look at, you know, just separating out, you know, procedures like that? That's a good question. You know, the neck um, is perhaps the earliest area of the face to give away uh, the fact that a facelift might be, you know, considered. And the, the neck is fortunately one of the areas that perhaps experiences the greatest um, improvement when you do do a facelift. I mean, the neck can really, you know, um, you can do a lot, a lot of good in the neck. Um, and so, but yeah, wi in men, because it's sometimes very difficult to get a really good result in the facial part of the face of, in facial being what I described a minute ago. Um, in men, rejuvenating that neck can be a very positive experience. And a lot of times you can do a very limited procedure where you make an incision literally on the front of the neck and you're able to subtract skin, you're able to tighten the muscles, you're able to take that fat out of the neck and do some things, release the platysma, do some things that will um, really allow that neck to come up and, re and, and co-apt very nicely um, to the underlying um, uh, structures of the of the neck and um, cricoid area and thyroid area and that sort of thing. So um, I would say that a neck lift done independent of a facelift is definitely doable, just as a brow lift done independently of a facelift is a doable thing to consider.